we have entered a period in man's history on this earth when the black man is going to get up again to be liberated. You know, liberating the black man means liberating mankind. You see, when you enslave your mother and your father, what are you doing? You are keeping your very life survival information. And this statement I've just made is a very serious one. You know, in this neuro-linguistic, this is a new science of uh, language that I have created called neuro-linguistics. I thought somebody was going to bring a, a felt pen. Okay. Uh, now, the research confirmed the black person as the original inhabitant, the language as the original language, but I said that if the black person is the original inhabitant, the tree, and this group, the particular group, the, from the work of this uh, black Egyptologist, Professor Ben Yakena, mm -hmm. you know, some of his work actually showed that the papyrus of Hunefe and how the ancient Egyptians defined their origins, and it all goes back to the tree language. So my point then was, you know, what my father had told, how do I show that if the tree is the first, what happened? How did all the other languages come in? Now, I do know that because man got stubborn, <laughs> God split the land. Uh -huh. And that, that was a very important point because what that meant was that at some point in time, the brain was interacting with the whole universe in such a way everybody could speak one language. Mm -hmm. Then, after the disobedience, he switched the computer mm -hmm. to the div diversified mode. Mm -hmm. So the brains will no longer be viewing things the same way. And came all these uh, uh, various uh, languages. So... I started by going back to the, the what people have really said about the alphabets, about various languages. And when you go to the alphabets, we have I'm writing. Now, in the key language, we have ab, the a, f, g, k, e, k, u, m, n, o, o, p, r, s, t, u, w, y. Now, see, our ancestors were very religious. I later define for you this word, a person, you know, when I have gone through the, the subject. And they will tell you that you are a person. Only if you worship God. Mm. Oh. See, so this alphabet, A, B, D, A, F, the creation is a thing of beauty. But what are they teaching today in all the universities? Are that these alphabets are just mere sounds to make words. But you see, you know, like I was saying, our ancestors were highly religious and they don't just pick up sounds to just make words and then further they will tell you that the words that people speak are arbitrary. In other words, at some point, a group of people will agree that we will call this and this mm. and it becomes mm. uh -huh. that man somehow started as amoeba and growing, evolving as an ape and one day say, hey, I'm a man. <laughs> and started, you know, imitating sounds and using this, creating his own language. Uh, what I have found is to the contrary. Our ancestors were highly religious. They selected these symbols to tell the story of the creation. The creation is a thing of beauty. Son, God, Ra, this, God, this is my soul. Me and you are all equal. Ra, se, te, wu, we, ye. God wants you to know that he is your origin, your beginning, and your end. Mm -hmm. So, 
When you go to school at the during those days or in P, we have a statement. What name? Ah, you don't know the letter A. You don't know even the alphabet. You see, if you go to school and you learn this thing without knowing the story, mm. how God wants you to know that is your beginning and your end, mm. that the creation is a thing of beauty, and these uh, uh, vowels here, a e o o. What does that say? I will praise, I, you. praise all praise be to God. Oh, no, 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 you got such beauty in language, in the alphabet, but you're not teaching the right thing. And when you start discovering this, this is beginning. I'm telling you, you are, we are going to be discovering greater and greater things in the years ahead. When you start to know this, when you start to know uh, that the brain was not just evolving, God said, let us make man. Mm -hmm. And he made man and put the capability to speak language in his head. Yes. Man didn't create language. Mm. God put the language mm. in his head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Now, when I go through this, then I found out that words that you use are uh, actually from this program. Uh, now I have this uh, word here. So that these words I find <coughs> are not arbitrary. The brain as a computer. Now I'm going to how we get the multiplicity of the language. <coughs> are we getting? And uh, here, if you see, I have here. Lemon, lemon, lemon. So right now, when you say lemon, you know, uh, you are calling this thing, this thing in my hand. But the question is, why they call it lemon? And the reason is that the brain saw something about lemon, your interaction with the lemon, and the computer program actually goes through a whole series of questions. And over here, in fact, I have identified the actual computer program written in the tree language by our ancestors left on an Atumpan drum message. You hear people playing drums? <coughs> it contains the computer program of the human brain, Where? all the intricacies of it, and how it finally comes out with this word, for example. So what does that mean when you say uh, lemon? We call it in tree, Anka. Daria, the type of lemon that you use to take a bath. But the English people, another language, you see, they call it lemon. Why? Because the computer saw their interaction with lemon. That says, yeah, mom, don't stink. Use this thing. <laughs> as, and, and in here, a lot of people, women and people use it under your armpit and so forth. And then it deodorizes. Mm -hmm. So you use it like that. Now, so you see that while somebody is saying Ankaidaria and somebody is saying lemon, they are only giving you information about their experiences with that particular uh, pen or item. Mm -hmm. 